Good morning. I hope I, I hope I'm live. Can you hear me all right? Yes. I'm going to steal Jessica's uh, stand. I'll try to put it back like I found it. Maybe. Um, well, my name is Pastor David. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's my privilege to be able to, to, to speak today and to welcome each of you on behalf of the church. We're really glad to have you here today. And um, Jenny and Barry, I thank you for sharing with us a little bit of your experience of, of interceding, and I appreciate your ministry and the difference that you make. Um, and I thank, thank you for all the intercessors among us today. Um, I hope you're having a good, good summer. It's, I hope you've had a good summer. It's like it's coming to a close, right? How many kids are going back to school tomorrow? Raise your hand. Who's going back? All right. Well, if we wish to pray God's best for you. You're going to have a great day tomorrow. We will claim it in the name of Jesus that there are good things in store for you, uh, for all you t tomorrow. Um, so, uh, would you join me in a word of prayer, and then I'll stop babbling and actually say what I want, want to say today. So, God, thank you for this time to be together. Thank you for um, the, the privilege to be in worship. I pray, God, that you would use me um, in a, that it's a supernatural way. God, I want you to speak. I ask you to speak through me, uh, around me, in spite of me. Uh, speak powerfully and boldly in this place, God. And I pray for all of us that we can have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts that are open and minds that are open to receive what you have in store for each of us today. And all God's people said together, amen. amen. Uh, so uh, as we continue on with our, our journey through the book of Exodus, we find ourselves now at, we're in the 32nd chapter. It's hard to believe we've been, we've made, we've, we've covered a lot of ground. And when we encounter Moses in this passage that was read today, uh, Moses has been up on top of Mount Sinai and it kind of in a meeting with God for, the, for about six weeks. It's been a long, a long enough that the people back at, at the uh, camp are, are starting to really freak out and wonder if, if Moses is no more. And after Moses has he's received the Ten Commandments, right? He's, he's got the book of the law. Um, God's kind of giving all of this to him. And, and sort of abruptly, God says to Moses, Moses, you got to go back down to camp right now. Get out of here. Your people, your people, have, uh, are sinning. They are, they've lost their way. They're corrupt. They're perverse. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to destroy them. So you need to get, go leave me. Go on back to camp. And um, they've been worshiping the golden calf. So basically, they have managed to break the first two of the Ten Commandments before the commandments even got back down the mountain. I mean, can anybody relate to that? You know, so God is God is white hot mad, and God says, "I'm going to destroy these people. I'm, I've basically I've had enough of them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take you, Moses, and I'm going to use you, and I'm going to build my great nation of people from you. But all these other folks, I'm getting ready to wipe them out. So that's essentially what God is saying here. And so this puts Moses in kind of an interesting. He's in an interesting spot here. Because God has just said to Moses, Moses, these are, these are your people. Did you catch that? They're your people. And I, and I read that to mean, Moses, they're your responsibility. They are your responsibility. They are in your care. So God has just told Moses this. And at the same time, God says, and I'm going to destroy your people. And so that puts Moses in sort of a spot like uh, do I stay or do I go? Remember, should I stay or should I go? If I stay, there will be trouble. If I go, it will be double. Remember that? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm getting it right. Moses is in this tough spot because, and, and some of the, the biblical, uh, you know, really smart people about the Bible said that Moses is sort of, Moses is being tested. The God's testing Moses. And here's, here's kind of the test. And the, it's, it's got, uh, you, a, it's an A, B, A or B. Options here. Option A, Moses, you let me destroy all these people and I will exalt you and make you great. That's option A. And so, and that's an option for Moses, right? And, and, and in some ways you say, well, Moses might go, all right, that sounds great. I'm sick of these people anyway. And if you want to exalt me and wipe them off the face of the earth, then that sounds pretty good. Or, but option, or option B, which is kind of goes unspoken, is, but well, Moses, you can stay 
And you can plead on their behalf for God's mercy and ask God to give them a second chance. Ask God to forgive them. You know, put your own, you know, your own hopes of being lifted up high and mighty. And put that, set that to the side and go to bat for your people. Does that make sense? He's got option A, option B. And it's, in some ways, you would think God, he, Moses might just say, I'm, you know, I'll go with option A, thank you very much. But what Moses does, as Moses chooses option B, he decides to stay. Right? He decides to stay. He decides not to walk away. He decides to stay and plead to God on behalf of the Israelites. He stays and asks for God's forgiveness. He stays and asks for God to relent from God's anger. He stays and he just puts himself all out there for the people. He, he intervenes, right? And we would call this intercession. That Moses intercedes for his people. He, you know, he stands in the gap. He steps into the breach. Whatever, however you want to put it, Moses, Moses intercedes. And I think that you and I, we're in a similar situation today as, as Moses. Every one of us, when, you, when we look around, we see people in need of God, desperate need of God. Right? If your eyes are open at all, Right? How you, you can't help but see people in need of God. People in need of God's healing, in need of God's forgiveness, in need of God's mercy, in need of God's guidance, in need of God's favor, and God's joy, and God's life, and, and God's salvation. Everywhere we look, whether you look around in your classroom at school tomorrow, you'll see people in need of God. Or you look around when you get to the office tomorrow. Or you look around at, when you go out shopping and about your business in town. You're going to see, you and I will see people in need of God. There, some are close to us that we know them well, like brothers, like family. And some are in distant parts of the world. We don't know them at all. But they're all in need of God. And you and I are put in the same situation as Moses. Because I believe when we see these folks... That we should hear the same words that God heard from, that Moses heard from God. These are your people. Steve, these are your people. David, they're your people. And we should feel a sense of responsibility, right? For the people, if strangers and friends. And when, when we begin to feel that, we're in the same, we find ourselves facing the same kind of test. Right? Here's the same, same exact test. I can go on my way and look out for number one and forget everybody else and, and just work on kind of raising myself up and letting God sort of pour out blessings on me. Or I can go the other way and say, you know what? I'm going to set aside my aspirations of my own success and my self-aggrandizement. And I'm going to put all that to the side because I care about these people and I'm going to put myself over here and, and plead on their behalf before God for God's favor, for God's forgiveness, for God's blessing. It's a choice, right? Every one of us, I think right now, we're, we, we're, we're, we need to take, we're taking the same test that Moses found himself tested with. And so you say, well... Intercession, I don't hear, we don't hear that word a lot, you know, I, we don't talk about that, to, that very often, but it's all around us. I was, uh, just a couple of exam examples come to mind. If you're a sports fan and you ever see the coach get off of the bench and go over to the referee and say, the, the call you made against my player, that's a bad call, blah, 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 blah. He was, he's interceding. Right? Or what about the delegation that travels from the United States to the Middle East to try to broker a peace deal between the Israelites and the Palestinians? Are they inter they're interceding? Right? They're stepping in the middle. What about at school when, uh, when one, one student confronts a bully on behalf of one who has been bullied? You're interceding. Right? You're stepping into the gap. We see, it, we see it all around us. And Moses gives us a good example of what that looks like here. He's interceding. And we also get from Moses an idea of what it might look like for us to really come, in, come before God. Interceding, arguing, you know, protesting, uh, challenging God. 
So I want you to kind of hear these words again. You might want to go back and, and reread this passage later today and to say, what, you know, what, does it look, what does it sound like for me to intercede? Well, here's what Moses says. I'm kind of paraphrasing a bit, but he says, Hold on a minute, Lord. Hold on a, hold on a minute. After all you have done for your, for your, peop, your people, now you're just going to discard them? You're going to throw them away? You created them. You delivered them, God. You sustained them, God. And now you're just going to turn your back on them? Is that the kind of God that you are? You can't do that, God. That's not, that's not the kind of God that you are. And if you, if you turn your back on them and you let them just die out here in the wilderness, if you kill them off, what are the Egyptians going to say? What are the, your enemies going to say? They're going to say, I told you so. I told you this God was no good. I told you this God wasn't worth your time. You're just giving them what, what they need, God. Just, and God, what about all their promises? Your promise of a land flowing with milk and honey. Are your promises no good? God, are you a liar? I thought you were faithful and true. What kind of God are you if you're going to do this? You can't do this, God. You've got to, you've got to forgive. That's who you are. Right? You've got you to get over your anger, God. You've got to let it go. And move on and give these people a second chance. That's who you are. And that's what you got to do, God. Now you're like, whoa, if I were to pray like this, I'd be afraid that God's going to zap me, right? Do you, can you get up in God's face like that? Is that possible? Is that okay? I, I mean, I feel like, I'm, man, I'm, get, I'm, I'm really taking a risk if I, if I kind of go toe-to-toe and head-to-head with God. It's hard to imagine. Some of us, we think, well, when I come before God, I need to be quiet. And I can't argue with God. I can't disagree with God. I can't express my frustrations with God. You can't do that. Well, that's not what the Scripture says. The Bible, from start to finish, is full of ex- examples of people going to head-to-head, hand-to-hand combat, I don't know, what, with God. You know, it's wrestling with God. So we worry about what's going what's to happen with Moses. What's going to happen to him? But here's the thing. We can do the same kind of interceding for the people that we see. And there's like all kinds of situations where, where we could step into the gap and we could intercede. And I was thinking of I, if, well, like, again, lots of examples, but one that comes to mind and, and as I'm watching the news is thinking about the, the need for a, a white privileged male to be interceding on behalf of African Americans. Right? What would it look like for me to come before God in prayer, and maybe all of us, to come, before, come to God in prayer and say, God, I thought, as I understand it, African Americans are your children too. You love them just as much as you love me. You love us all equally, God. What's going on? Why, if that's true, why, all this, why does this injustice persist? Why is there such discrimination and such hatred and such vileness coming out of people's mouths? Why is that, God? Where are you? Are you paying attention? Do you care? What about all your promises? I remember you saying that in Jesus Christ, we're all one. There's neither Jew or Gentile. There's neither, there's neither slave nor free. There's neither man nor woman. Are your promises? Is, is that just a bunch of bull? What's going on, God? And your people, you know, my African-American friends, they're praying. And they're asking for your help. And they're afraid. And, and I don't see you doing anything to help. What goes, God? Do you care about them? I believe you care about them. I know you care about them. So God, you've got to, you've got to get busy here. You've you got to make some things happen. We've got to see some justice and some righteousness flowing here in our community and throughout this world. Can you imagine praying like that? So here's what you got to do, God. You got you to bless my friends, black and white. And that's the kind of prayer, I think, that Moses models for us. And again, whether you're, you've got someone in your heart that's going, whose marriage is in trouble, or they're, strung, they're, on, they're hooked on drugs, or they need a job, you can come before God and, and you lift up those same, those same promises and you call God to do what you think God is all about, what God has promised to do. So what happens is Moses gets zapped. Is he wiped off the, off the face of the earth because he comes before God with such boldness? No. 
In fact, what we see is God changes God's mind. That God does what Moses asks and God forgives the people. And God gives them more time. And God relents from God's anger. His, his intercession is, makes a difference. And so what that tells me is if you and I are able to, and willing to go to God with such boldness, we're going to see things change. We can see people's lives changed. We can see the world changed. Right? And it may just be God's just waiting for us to, to get, get busy with the work of interceding. And then we might see some really amazing stuff happen. Now, there's a couple of things that have got to happen if we're going to be able to intercede. The first thing is this. You, 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 cannot inter, you cannot be a good interceder if you don't know God. If you don't know what God's promises are, how can you go to God so you're not keeping your promises? If you don't know who's well, God's character, that God is slow to anger and quick to forgive and all that, God is full of... How can you challenge God's character if you don't know who God is? You, and we've got to know our way up to the mountain. God, Moses, and, you know, the Mount Sinai, the place where you meet God. You've got to have that place, right? Where you are able to... Where you go and you meet with God. And you're in God's presence and you're able to communicate with God and hear God and, and pour your heart out before God. You've got to have a place. If you don't have a place and you don't know the, this God, you can't intercede worth a hill of beans. I don't know where a hill of beans came from, but you won't be a very good interceder if you don't know God. If you're not spending time with God. I mean, that's true for me. It's true for you. And I've got to be able to, to say, bring before God a life that as, as some attempt at holiness. Like if I'm going to be a good, faithful interceder, then I've got to, God's got to see in me and a real attempt to be righteous and holy in my ways. That God will see something in me that, that reflects who God is. Right? And then God's going to Give, God, God is able to hear those prayers and God's going to, to listen. And I believe God's going to move. The Word of God says, this is James chapter 5 verse 16, tells us that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Meaning your prayers, if you're, if you're a righteous man, a righteous woman, if you're a righteous boy, a righteous girl, your prayers are going to change things. So I've got to know who God is, know what God's like, have a relationship with God, and then I'm going to be able to intercede. And I also think that the more I intercede, the more I'm going to know who God is. Right? And we said all along, this whole journey of Exodus, it is the journey to know God. 